everybody, and welcome. Ken Kasha here. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Welcome to today's broadcast, 90 Minutes, the best of the best of our master classes for 2017. Now, I just want to wait a couple of moments, give people a chance to log in and access before we dive into material. We have so much to cover, and I so very much appreciate you being here and your interest. I know this is can be a crazy time of the year and so busy with family, you know, obligations and closing out books for the year and all the things that go along with our lives. So I, you honor me with your presence, and I want to honor you today by doing the best possible job I can for you to give you some very, very useful, meaningful, even fun, practical takeaways. So this is actually, it's a master class as we now call them nowadays, but it's really, it's also a, a mini workshop, if you will, 90 minutes. So regardless of whether you're highly skilled and whatever level of development you're at, I don't know because there are, wow, close to 150 people who have registered. I know many have already communicated to me they'd be watching the replay. I understand we have people from, I don't know how many different countries, but at least 10 different countries who are on with us. You guys rock. Wow. People like you who inspire me. And I, I really appreciate you affording me this opportunity to share something that I so very much love. A, I like to, I love to do it. And B, because I find I grow myself as a person. So this is something we're doing together growing. For me, it's been nearly 50 years. And I find that there's no better way to evolve, to learn, to grow, to gain mastery, then by, yes, studying and gathering information, but you got to bring it to life. you got to integrate it into your life. And when you teach or share with somebody else, so feel free to share this video with people who could benefit. Feel free to take the content. So I hope you're in a quiet environment. I hope that you're ready to take some notes. You've got some pencil paper because I'm going to need to move quickly because we're going to expand on while reviewing some of the key over the past 10 master classes this year. And I had this idea because in our culture, you know, New Year's means a lot of different things to people. But actually, it's what? The completion of one year and the start of a new year. And traditionally, culturally, in just about every arena in, on our planet, very symbolic of new beginning, a new start. And the only way to have truly a new, fresh beginning is to learn from the past. So a bit of an overview. We've got to free ourselves, liberate ourselves from those things, patterns, behaviors, maybe even people that no longer contribute, no longer serve to our highest good. It's important that we make peace with the past. We may not be able to change it, but we can change our perspective, our feeling about it. And that's an important principle, which we'll, which we'll look at, I'll remind you about for that. And that makes us ready. So again, you know, for at least 30 plus years of my career, I've been teaching this principle that although information is important and the quality of information is important and that it, you know, we all need to study and read and research. However, it does us no good unless we what? Actually integrate it, make it a part of our lives, and use it. And that's my intention here with these master classes, is to provide you continued education, support, reinforcement, some repetition, which is how you make it permanent so that you'll go on automatic. <laughs> Got a little tongue tied there already. So, welcome aboard. So, if you are a silver practitioner, you've been through the training, either the basic lecture series or the new format that we've been using for now over 10 years, silver life and intuition system, at least in most parts of the world, we are. You want to review that. You want to uh, refer to some of the techniques that you can add to what I'm doing here that you can complement it. However, this is not the time or place to teach that. 
we spend four days, four 10 hour days teaching those principles, practicing with those principles. If you're not a sober practitioner yet, maybe you've just been reading the books. Maybe you've got some of the home study program, or maybe a friend has invited you to be here. Fantastic. No worries, because what I'll be covering with you will stand alone by itself. The only thing I cannot predict for you is you know, where you're at. And what I do know, it will help you to raise the bar. It will help you to take you to you know, a better level, if you will, a higher degree of mastery with what you know. And that's one of the beauties of personal growth, is that we can always grow and move regardless of where we're at. Because it's not, again, what you know. I cannot emphasize that. Because we have all been seduced by the promise of cutting edge, new, and exciting. It's like a new marriage. You know, the honeymoon effect. Every relationship, every career, every job, every time we, we move somewhere or go someplace for the first time, we experience what some have identified. You may remember reading Dr. Bruce Lipton's book, The Honeymoon Effect. I love it as a metaphor because it's so true. When something is new and novel, the way we are wired neurologically, we're like this, and we pay more attention. We're more on, on, on alert, if you will. And when we pay attention, you know, we give more energy to it. And where energy goes, information flows. So the law of attention, which is important to remember, is whatever we give attention to, we give energy to. And whatever we give energy to, will grow and multiply. So that's why when we're in that honeymoon effect, ah, we notice everything, all the details. In our personal spiritual growth, I think part of, a big part of why we're here is I do believe we're spiritual beings having a physical experience, is to grow, to heal, and to continue our human evolution, to access our best self, our authentic self, and make it manifest in the world so that in all that we do when we're with our spouse, with our children, with our clients, doing the work we do, maybe just reading a book on vacation, doing a workout, in all that we do, we want to what? Bring our A game with us, don't we? We want to get the most out of it. We want to access, again, an authentic best. And that's what this is about, personal, true personal development, personal growth. It's about doing the internal work. So welcome aboard again. Our theme, my theme has been taking command. So this is about giving you the tools, developing the tools to truly take command, to take charge of your life. And as you know, that's an inside thing. And I honor you for your diligence. I honor you for your work, your effort, because it's not easy. And sometimes it seems easier to just give up and say, screw this, you know. So I'm with you guys. I'm not going to try and kid you and seduce you like I see so much online with, it's so easy, just do this and do that and touch and point. Yeah, right. If it were truly that easy, we'd all be, woo, on top of, you know, the world. And I know you know better, you're intelligent with that. So I mean no disrespect. I just want to really acknowledge that and acknowledge you for your efforts. Some of you, many of you have been just about every master class I've done whether they're for free, whether we charge the small $29 fee that we usually charge. And that's fantastic. Thank you. And I appreciate the feedback and comments. So step number one, I think, let me just take a look. I gotta put my readers on. People are great. People are signing in before there was uh, nobody with that. And I wanna just check something else too, as we get ready, which will help us to do this even better. Let me just see as we're, um, Okay, I was hoping, let me just check. I wanted to see if I can, yes, okay. And access the mute role here for that. I know we're live and let's see. Okay, guys, I have looked and challenged this and attempted to find the mute role. So all I can say to you is, You've got me here, and you can chat with each other apparently, but because I'm plugged in there, not so much of me. So after this, 
at any time. Questions, pop me an email. That would be prefer preferred, preferred. Or you can instant message me. If the emails are better, I can look and then give it the attention you so deserve. So first takeaway, number one. One of the things we covered over the, this past year was a familiar technique which started it all, the three fingers. It's a trigger mechanism. It's an accelerated learning tool. It's about learning how to learn. It's about not being reactive and buying into people's stuff. It's about being more mindful, being more attentive. It's an incredible tool, very powerful tool, probably one of the most used. It's what started this whole movement become known way back in 1966 when we went public, became known as the civil method. However, part of the study technique which you can customize for business, for work, for things. There's another term I heard Brendan Bouchard call it transition meditation. I like the term. So I want to borrow that expression. And this transition means that whenever we go from one, for example, today, you're here with me in this masterclass. Right? Maybe you were just doing some work. Maybe you were just having a conversation with a loved one. Maybe you were just on the telephone. Maybe it was very serious. Maybe it was challenging. Maybe it wasn't. Or maybe some things happened during the holidays that you know, have upset you. So the, the challenge is that we want to not forget it. But here you are in the master class, you want to be what? Focused, laser like. You want to be mindful. Make sure you've turned off your phone. Make sure you're off of email. Make sure you're in a quiet room. So that you get the most out of it. Rather than say, well, I'll go back to the replay. Yes, you can go back to the replay, but I want you to look at this several times over the next 90 days because you get even more with that. So the transition means, how do we move from one situation, one meeting, one phone call, one client to another? How do we move from work to our home? This is one of the things I emphasize with my coach clients who grace me with allowing me to mentor them, whether it be building their business, whether it be getting unstuck. And one that really touched my heart was one of the, I won't use his name because I didn't get permission to, but one individual found that He's with his four-year-old son, and he was so distracted on his phone. I know this sounds so simple and so elementary, that he wasn't really fully there, fully present. And by using this very simple transition-type meditation, it takes one minute to three minutes. It's not a long process. He found that he was now fully engaged with his four-year-old, having more fun, paying more attention. So I want to do that right now as we move into this master class. And this is your first takeaway. And I want you to start using this in your life regularly as you move through your day. So yes, I know we're about to go into the new year. And I made a comment in one of the emails, forget New Year's resolution. And most people, they're a waste of time. It's interesting. You've all heard this. January 1 and the first week of January, the gyms are packed. Standing room only. By February 1 or sooner, they're empty again. Because unless we integrate it, unless we rewire the brain, unless we make new patterns and go on autopilot, it's not discipline, it's consistency. And that takes repetition. We go slip back into the old unproductive behaviors that no longer serve us. So I've stopped. I really don't make resolution. I mean, I think we should do that daily, weekly. Sure, have a, a yearly plan, a quarterly plan, of course. Just do this on a daily basis as you move through the day. So here's how it works. If you're new to the transition meditation, very simply, when you finish this on the phone with a client, or you've just given a presentation, or you went from one meeting and you're going to another, you're going to just find a place, very simply close your eyes. You're going to take three slow, deep breaths. That's it. Belly breath, inhaling very slowly, fill your body, fill your belly, right? And then exhale out your mouth. And of course, with your eyelids closed. And as you're exhaling, you're going to just release any tension. So the practitioners do three, 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 you know, three to one method. Because that's already ingrained in you to relax, just to die to relax. Second, two, 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 if you're against the practitioner. If not, just release any mental tension. And third deep breath, very slow, take your time. It takes more time to do the breathing. <laughs> Hold it a few seconds and then exhale. Then 
be clear about your intention. Just simply, what's your intention? What are you now moving into? Okay, so I'm here with Ken Kasha in this master class. I want to be fully present. I desire superior concentration, superior understanding. I want to hear what I need to hear to make my life better, to grow. Simple as that. You might be with a client, you're giving a presentation, you're about to give a performance, you're about to have a sensitive conversation with your loved one, or you're about to spend some time with your grandchildren. It doesn't matter. You just want to be clear about your intention. It helps you, it's like mindfulness on steroids, truly. Because you're focusing, whatever we give attention to, we give energy to. And this is all about energy. So may I remind you, during research this week for this presentation, I was looking over, I was actually going over some YouTube videos, some of my others, and reminded that, if you remember in the day two of the civil life, of the four day training, the immersion experience, I show Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's the director in New York City. He's an astrophysicist of the, um, the center went, I just went blank with it, but you know who I mean, he's been all over the place. And as an astrophysicist, he reminded us that the very things that make up our body, so here we see a physical body, and at one of the very smallest levels, although it's not the smallest, but one of the smallest, we're made up of atoms. And those atoms, on a smaller level, are made up of what? Energy, energy. And that energy, we're getting more sophisticated, is not visible to the human eye. Most equipment kind of pick it up. It's called the subtle energy. So really, we are energy beings. And as energy beings, we kind of radiate in, with the universe and either get into a flow where it seems like the universe has got our back, or we hit a wall and we feel. So why is it that some people seem to just flow through life and navigate, and they move along, and they're happy, they're joyful, they're peaceful, they're getting what they want, they have a a purposeful life or you know, they're feeling fulfilled it's not about the money and maybe they are very wealthy maybe they're, you know the spirit and why others always get just so close but no cigar this flow so you hear a lot about flow it's been one of my favorite topics transition meditation will help you continue to stay into a flow so that you bring your best self with you into the new event I'm also going to preview this class, so let's do it right now. Remember, this is your takeaway that I want you to do each and every day to make transition. And really, you can do it in maybe 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes tops. It doesn't have to be long. It's just a matter of being clear. So the breathing is important because that changes your brain chemistry. That helps to release more dopamine, more serotonin. That helps to fire up the frontal lobe. And that helps us to access the higher thinking functions of our brain and we're more likely to be at our best. So this is a whole science to this. So let's do it right now. So please, as long as it's safe for you to do this, and you don't, God forbid, have this in your car while you're driving, you know, the video. And if you do, then please be careful. I don't condone that. All right, all your eyes to close. Very slow belly breath, take your time, hold it a few seconds. Exhale out your mouth, that's it. Release any of the tension or mentally repeat, visualize the number three several times. Desire to relax. Allow a second slow deep belly breath, that's it, take your time. Hold it a few seconds. Exhale out your mouth. Make noise. Release the tension. Imagine releasing that which no longer serves your highest good. Again, silver practitioners, you can think two, two, two. And you're releasing the junk, the stuff that's gotten in the way. Allow another deep breath. Slowly energizing your body, allowing your body, your brain, and your mind to attune to a deeper level of focused awareness as you exhale out your mouth, releasing that which has gotten in the way of your 
manifesting your highest good, your best self. Release it. Let it go. Excellent. Now, be clear about your intention. Take a moment to reflect on your own personal intention. For example, you may reflect on some of your wins in 2017, or even just in a daily way. Some of the wins, some of the growth, some of the great things you've done. Feel good about it, appreciate it. While also reflecting on what some of the pitfalls, shortcomings, challenges, things that maybe got in the way, held you back. Now imagine as we move into a new beginning, new start, which I love about this time of the year. It's so symbolic, it's so rich, and the whole culture supports that this is a new beginning, an opportunity to start over. And even biologically, that is how we are wired. Every day, cells in the body die. And new cells are born. And every day is an opportunity to rewire the brain and to rewire, yes, our DNA. And that is science. It is not a metaphysical concept anymore. So today, you're in a master class with me, Ken Kasha, as your guide, your coach, your mentor. You will enjoy superior concentration, superior understanding during this presentation. We'll hear and experience what you need to enhance the quality of your life. And this is so. Today, quite a few takeaways for you. We're going to reflect on the law of attention and how that relates and some common principles. We'll also work on creating harmony, reducing conflict, so that we can make ready for the new, so that we can find peace and fulfillment and be at peace in our lives. But then also another takeaway, we're going to work on triggers, triggers that you can use to support this, to bring your growth with you wherever you go. And then we're going to, excuse me, work on accessing again, trusting your intuition for that, and some of the key aspects of that. There will be some exercises, there will be some short guided meditations, and then we're going to talk about creating a new state of being to be defined by a vision of your future instead of the past. You want to move, past, learn from the past, and then move on. So now, in a moment, you open your eyes. You open your eyes. You'll be awake. You'll be alert. Focus. Superior concentration and understanding. If you're a silver practitioner and you know the three fingers technique, remember you may use this to help you maintain superior concentration, so that you make strong impressions on your brain, and at any time in the future when you need a desire, I'll quickly do the recall. And this is so. You may now open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling fantastic. Excellent. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Again, transition meditation. Remember, review your silver three fingers technique, learning strategy. It's chock full of all sorts of tools for that. And for those of you who have yet, I hope one day you will grace with your presence in an immersion. It is probably the most powerful experience, it's one of the most transformative experiences of your life and i would be honored to have you with me one day and if you don't do something anything that will support your growth all right so a lot of breath and let's move on so i'm going to put on my readers and i have a lot of really important content so i took some notes and i, I put it as you know since i'm not using a screen share i'm not using a powerpoint or a whiteboard I'm going to use this as a reminder to make sure because I've set up and organized and spent a lot of time putting together some ideas. So this first thing, this transition meditation, is about self-care. It's about taking care of yourself. It's about making sure that you, even just doing that throughout the day, will help release the tension, will help you to have more energy, more vitality, so that you get through the day with more grace and ease, and you don't go home like this. You know, that's life, truly. And if you can take a five to 15 minutes 
dynamic meditation or even just a mindfulness break, an alpha break as we call it in Silva, even better, even better. So it's about enhancing your performance. It's about the mindfulness. So number two takeaway is we want to talk about the law of attention. And I mentioned earlier before about energy. So really I want to emphasize here is alignment. The question is, are you in alignment with the people, the situation, the opportunity, the career that is serving, that's contributing to you having a more fulfilling life? You know, for some of us, unfortunately, you might say, are you kidding me, Ken? I know. But it's certainly then something to work on. It is worth an investment of your time to start exploring. I want you to start, if you're not there, where will you find meaning? What are opportunities? What are careers? What are work life for that? Again, it's another whole topic. In fact, I think I'll do a master class on this. But the question is about in order to bring our best self out, part of alignment means being in integrity. And I was reading the book, um, Bringing Your Spirit at Work or Recovering Your Spirit at Work by Jack Hawley. The individual, he talks about the individual who founded the Hard Rock Cafe. Are you aware that the individual who founded, this is before it became corporate, before it was sold to corporate entities. It was, the man was a follower of Sai Baba, a, 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 a spiritual leader, if you will, from India. And he coined the expression that you see all over, a big plaque right on the front before you enter, love, serve, and remember. Love your clients, love your customers, serve them and remember them, be loyal to them, value them. Wow, what an intention, huh? That's what originally that was founded on, a principle. And he gives a definition of integrity as having the courage to take a stand, having a courage to allow your inner truth to come out, to speak your mind, to follow your bliss, if you will, to follow that, even when it seems like everybody is working against you. It's a tough place. I've been there myself more times than I care to remember. It can be very lonely, especially if you're in a leadership position. Because to stand on truth, to stand on your inner truth, to do the right thing is often can be challenging because it's the path of least resistance that people follow, we just kind of slide into. And if we're surrounded by naysayers, if we're surrounded by overly critical people, so guys, I want you to be mindful of this. It doesn't mean you have to write them off. Maybe you do. But if you live with these people or you're in a relationship that you don't want to let go of, it's important that you find a way to maintain your own integrity. Because if you don't, you're going to dread life. You're going to dread activity and dread. You'll, you'll lose your motivation. People often think they're not disciplined. It's motivation that's the issue. And motivation comes from here. It comes from inside. It comes from our heart. It comes from the feeling of, yes, this is important. This feels right. Have you ever had that experience that just didn't feel like it was the right thing? Have you ever been asked to do something at work? I know people I had a client who said he had a very lucrative job. He's making 150 grand a year, a young man in his very early 30s. But management was lying to his client. He couldn't take it anymore. He said, this is wrong. And he kind of clean. So he left that lucrative position and started all over. I think it was very courageous of this person. Very courageous. It took a lot of guts. And this person is still not there, but they're living their own truth, having more fun, more at ease. And that's what I want you to look at because if it's just about the money, you got to pay the bills, you're in fear. When we're out of alignment, we become reactive. When we're out of alignment with our highest good, our greatest good, we become a victim and we lose our power because we're giving it to other people, we're giving it to other situations, and we go on the defense mode, and then the real part of the brain that's to do with survival and security takes over and we're reactive, we're defensive, and we make decisions out of fear. We respond, excuse me, react out of fear rather than love. And it's been said, I hope it doesn't sound too corny, but the frequencies of love free us, liberate us from 
fear, guilt, anger, and those negative feelings and emotions that get us locked in to dread and despair and helplessness and can lead to depression. And so people say, I can't afford to leave. But can you afford your medical bills? Can you afford all the things that are going on? So the first thing is this alignment, this purpose, having that. So the question I want to ask is, is you want to prioritize who you spend your time with. We become who we spend most of our time with, just like who we become, spend most of our time with. So maybe you want to prioritize the events, the situations, the books you read, the people you spend your time with, right? And then when you've got a, a naysayer, someone who's overly critical, this is somebody to, you know, if you're a civil practitioner, cancel, cancel privately, mentally, and reframe something more positive you know, with respect to that. So I've compiled some questions for you. And you remember in one of our master classes when we talked about how to get out of overwhelm and how to get more into love. These four questions are a way to minimize and or eliminate conflict. Because conflict is inevitable and it's typically okay. And yes, it's even possible to eliminate it completely and at a bare minimum to minimize it, to reduce it. So how in the world are you and I going to feel peaceful and blessed? And how in the world are we going to feel at peace with ourselves if we're full of anger and resentment and guilt and uh, right? You know this. We've got to make peace with that. And yet we find ourselves in situations that are very challenging for a variety of reasons, whether we live with the person, whether we work with the person, maybe it's our boss, someone we answer to, and they have the you know the, the last say. And we're kind of at their mercy that we can speak up. But the final say is the person, the president, the CEO, your manager, whoever it might be with that. I've been there, done that myself also. So why is this important? So I remind you, when we talk about being energy beings, your thought, we want to cultivate creative thoughts, positive, hopeful, loving, kind, generous thoughts. Because thoughts are like a light switch. Thoughts are what trigger. Thought loss, just like a light switch, when you flip the switch in the back, turns on the light or turns it off, our thoughts trigger what? Feelings, a recall of past events, a recall of people, situations, a recall of challenges, or the anger, or the upset, or the disappointment. And we get plugged in again. And then we get victimized, and we feel like a victim, and we feel like you know, we don't have control. And you're going with this. And those feelings will literally trigger emotions and cause the brain to release all sorts of neuropeptides, those chemical messengers of the brain. And when that happens, you can't control that. It takes an incredible effort. And then we get into it, and we get into the funk. And then if it really stays with us, maybe we go into a depression, or our voice cracks, or our performance, or our facial features change. And, and the slight nuances that can be the difference that makes the difference between whether when you're making a presentation, somebody says yes or no, or whether the sensitive conversation you're having is received openly and lovingly and makes a difference, or whether it's treated with defensiveness. So it affects our physiology, it affects our actions, our behavior, how we perform, how we act or don't act. And that, of course, affects the outcome. It's a fundamental principle. And it's the, probably the most important aspect what so many of the tools and techniques we learn in personal and spiritual development are designed to do is to help us to master our thoughts, to master these triggers, which is why we need to cover that later. So a very friendly reminder. So here's the question. Our aim is to have peace and tranquility, to have new beginnings, to be defined by a vision of our future, what we see coming, what we want more of, our best self, right? So here's the four questions. Write them down. I don't have any visuals for you here. They're easy enough to remember. Four simple questions. I want you to do this now with me. So please think of a person in your life that you find child you're in conflict with. Or think of a situation, a work situation that you're in conflict with. Or maybe it could be quality of life with respect to the environment, your community, the world, you know, the state, nation, or world we live in. I mean, it can be very small, but a bigger picture. 
I want you to do this with me as we, as we go through it. So for example, with the environment, there's a growing concern that so many of us share about pollution, right? And the damaging effect. And the air and climate change and affecting the quality of the air and the global landscape and the erratic weather pattern. However, first question is, can you, first question is, can I change that? I mean, you as an individual, ask yourself, can you change that person? You have no right to change that person. And we're just, you and I, just one of seven and a half billion people live on this planet. It's not just me or you individually. It's the collective of us that affect the community, that affect our state, our nation, our world. So some things are beyond our individual control, but we can contribute. So maybe I can be more mindful to recycle, to drive a hybrid, or to be careful not to, to minimize my, my carbon footprint, as they say. And we find as much as we can, slowly but surely, to help out. And if each of us does that, sure, it makes a difference. Second question is, can I help that person? If this is a person or situation, especially like your boss, can you help them? So many of you have written to me and said, oh, Ken, I'm so concerned about my wife. I'm so concerned about my child. I'm so concerned about my brother, et cetera. But you can just go so far because if they won't listen, if they won't accept what you're offering, and they say, oh, I didn't ask for any help. What do you do, right? You know, you back off. So people are funny like that. So often the answer is, not really. I mean, we can speak from our heart. We can make something available. The third question is, can I live with it? Can I live with him or her? So if you're with a supervisor, a boss, a company, an organization, question is, can I live with their policies? Can I live with their strategies? Can I live, can I stay in integrity with what they're asking me to do? If my needs, if your needs are not being met in a relationship, the question is, can I live with it the way it is? So then if not, if the answer is no, then you owe it to yourself to do something, to express what you need and want and do your best so that you can be in more harmony in that relationship not just go into passive aggressive behavior and you know get bitchy you know and angry and and then nobody wins or to feel dread and just hate what you're doing so sometimes we have to just say this is the way it is and we need to embrace this is the way it is or this is the way this person is and embrace the idiosyncrasies love them as best you can and the fourth question is most important, most powerful, most effective, most realistic. Can I change me? So ask yourself, can I change me? Or what can I do to fit in this situation better? I know guys, very intelligent. Many of you have been on this path for a long time. And this may seem like common sense. But is it common practice? And that's what I find that so often people confess to me, Ken, I know what to do. I have all these tools. This is incredible. But I'm not using it. And that's the purpose of master classes like this and my time. It's my job is to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you, you know, to maybe lovingly kick you in the butt so that you actually practice these principles. And that maybe you see it and hear it and it in a different way. Every time I read a book, every time I shit with you, I find myself reflecting, oh yeah, Ken, how come you haven't done that in your own life? So welcome aboard. We're all in this together. So what can you do for me? So that may mean you may need to take some more training. You may need to read a book. You may need to attend a program. You may need to ask for help, a coach, a, 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 a therapy, a doctor, whatever it may be. It's okay to ask for help. Start doing that regularly. Ask for help. Nobody does it alone. If you're not practicing that already, you'd be pleasantly surprised how many people would be very happy to help out with the ask. So very important with that. 
So what I'm saying, guys, is that in life, it happens. The big S. What's the big S? Stuff. BS. You can see the chart behind me, what we call the beta stuff. Some people say shit happens. Excuse me for saying that. Forgive my language. I'm sure you've heard worse. But to make the point, some of these life events are within our control. You know that, I know that. Some of them are not. So what we're talking about here is perspective. The way we look at it. Having fun with our eldest son. With due respect, we love him dearly. He now lives on the island of St. Thomas. 80 degrees and balmy there. And here we've been having sub-zero weather in Connecticut. Oh my God. And it's all he talks about. The weather, how cold it is. We're supposed to go up to New Hampshire with some dear friends to stow. I'm not going to have you to move them up. I decided not to, because here it was in the teens, low teens, there it was going to be sub-zero. We did have no zero. Well, I understand that. I know that we acclimate and get used to it. Absolutely, no question about it. And it's tough. Or when they come up north for the holidays to visit family and friends, it's not easy. Of course not. Just like when you and I, if we live in the Northeast, go to the very warm climate, we're like, I can't breathe here. It's too hot. So it's all a matter of what we get used to. It's relative. However, whatever you give attention to, you give energy to. So if we're constantly thinking about and paying attention to how bloody cold it is and the weather, you know, morning and night, and looking at the temperature, and say, oh my God, it's so cold, it's so cold, it's so cold. Well, guess what? It is mind over matter. Absolutely, no question about it. Our thoughts affect our physiology. And that is a fact. So you could minimize the discomfort, maybe even eliminate the certain. And it helps to bundle up. It helps to dress appropriately because you live in the Northeast. But this is important, guys. It's a matter of perspective. And that perspective influences our attitude, whether we're optimistic or pessimistic. If we're optimistic, we're more likely to act, we're more likely to do things. When there's hope, we feel good. When there's dread, when there's pessimism, when we feel sorry for ourselves, when we feel like a victim, we give up with that. Why bother? Who cares? Been there, done that. Same old, same old. Is it really? The information may be the same. It's the practice, the consistent application that makes the difference. And again, I remind you that. Work with that. So let's look at some solutions for this. One of the solutions, and I want to go get ready for an exercise with you, is, as you know, we need to release that which no longer serves our highest good. Right? We, want, we need to release. So how do you release? I'm talking about forgiveness. So we may need to forgive people in our lives, not accept it. The behavior is unacceptable. We don't want to condone the unacceptable behavior. Absolutely. That's no way. And we can't change what was done. So some people have been horribly traumatized. Some people have been horribly upset, disappointed, betrayed. You ever have someone make an agreement with you and you handshake on it or you agree on it? And they change and they don't discuss it with you, and you find out the hard way, embarrassing way. No easy task, betrayal. Well, we're all in this together, and people are people. You know, people are desperate, and people feel desperate, and in fear, they do desperate things. So, I'm not excusing the behavior, it stinks, it sucks, and it's not fair. But nowhere is it written in life. That it should be fair. And it's a common problem therapeutically that many therapists reported that people think, oh, it's not fair. Oh, liar. Like well, no way to live. Life sometimes just isn't. It's up to you, it's up to me to do what we can to stay in integrity. So it takes some compassion to recognize the humanity in another person, to recognize their humanity, and to feel some compassion for their shortcomings. So in your laboratory level, if you're a sober practitioner, it's an excellent place to do this. Well, it's just intense, powerful, deeply moving spiritual inner work. And if you're not a sober practitioner, just find a happy place. In fact, many are sober. One of my current coach clients who I'm mentoring said, you know, Ken, I know I need to do this. And it's interesting. We started it uh, three weeks. 
And all of a sudden, things are happening. The simple little thing, all of a sudden, things are fitting into place. All of a sudden, she doesn't have those knots on her stomach. All of a sudden, she's sleeping better. All of a sudden, she's moving along, feeling more confident. The feedback, isn't it? This is wonderful. It's inspiring. So, guys, do this. Make an assessment. If you're moving into the new year, depending on when you're watching this video, make an assessment of, of this past year. And what are some of the things where you shortcomings? Maybe forgive yourself. Forgive people who wronged you, betrayed you, didn't keep their word. Again, you're not accepting. You may choose to have nothing to do with the person again. You may choose to liberate yourself and like, thank you, God bless you, go your own way, be happy. That's how you bless you bless them. I don't mean I know which your spiritual background is, a religious background. For me, I was raised a dogmatic Catholic. So it's easy for me just to naturally say, God bless, universe bless, source bless, somebody bless, mom bless them. And oh, that means it's just good energy. May they learn and get what they need and want in their life. And I choose to not have anything to do with the person anymore. Go your own way, be happy, mean it. Very important principle. When we change how we feel about the past, we change our perspective. We change. When you change your energy, you change your life. And this will change your energetics. It will help change your heart coherence level. You can even wire yourself to brain waves, machines, EEGs. You can even do electronic vote meters. There's so many ways you can measure this. Measurable, it's quantifiable, it's a fact. It'll take time. Also, you want to forgive yourself. So one of the things that I often talk about is on a daily basis, I want you to review your day, coming from disappointment that things didn't work out, to review quietly before you go off to sleep. And give yourself permission not to be perfect. Recognize, hey man, I screwed up. Oh my God, look what I did. If you just do this, guaranteed, you will thank me, you will remember this for the rest of your life. It is one of the most powerful strategies that I've been teaching for better than 34 years. I know I've been almost 50 years, but I started when I started traveling the world when Jose Silva brought me. There were only four of us on the planet out of a thousand silver instructors, including the founder himself. And I was so fortunate, he saw in me, and I became one of those people. I was the first person to come on board to be allowed to conduct graduate events programs. And then I became training director. Wow. In my heart, I will always feel deep level of appreciation for Jose and Juan Silva for gracing me with that opportunity. And everywhere I've traveled, I've worked with translators, I've worked in 27 different nations, I've adjusted to every culture and blended and taken the information and helped them integrate it. I can tell you this has been tested with close to a couple hundred thousand people. Just to keep yourself. Give myself permission not to be perfect. And then I want you to go back in time next to tell me. So here's a takeaway, and I'll go back over this later. Go back to that event, whether it was a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, 10 years ago, and you relive it like a movie director. Cut, it's not me, I want to be that way. And you reframe it, and you start imagining, you start imagining the way you prefer to be. You start imagining your ideal self. You start imagining the ideal scenario, how you would have preferred what you would have preferred to have said, how you would have preferred to have said it, how you would have preferred to act. If you do that at night before you go to sleep, you will see substantial, and I mean substantial, measurable changes in your life on a daily basis. Do it. Another takeaway for you. So what you're looking for is in this, before we go into some, shall I say, reframing techniques, programming techniques, you're looking for, this is so important because you're looking for signs of resistance. So when you do your programming, when you do your reframing, when you're meditating, when you're imagining your ideal, your best self, if you start feeling uncomfortable in your stomach, if you start feeling like not, that's your body telling you, baby, you're not ready. Something's holding you back. You're still attached to something that's in the way, that's getting in your way. It means you need to work on that and adjust what's going on. What needs my attention? If you're nice and comfortable, right? And then you start coughing, choking, or swallowing, and it wasn't happening before, that could be a sign of resistance. I say it could be because one of the things that happens is if you have any mucus or phlegm, 
system. Since I was a young child, by the way, I've had that. You say it's in the family, and it is in the family. I don't like to buy into that program. You've been working on it, and 10 times better than I ever was. For those of you who have worked with me, you know that I often I drink hot water on the teaching, and it has been, and I've addressed it medically, I've addressed it nutritionally. When you meditate, it loosens any of that. So if you have any excess mucus or phlegm from smoking, from air pollution, from just environmental disorders like I had when I was younger, it will loosen it. So that doesn't mean there's resistance, that's a good thing. So maybe you have a tissue handy with you so that you can you continue. Which sometimes is the sign of resistance. If you find that you can easily remember the past, but when you're imagining the future, it's blank or it's not as vivid or it's vague, that's a sign of resistance. Meaning, once you own it emotionally, then you're ready to manifest it. It means you haven't changed your energy, it means you haven't realigned yourself. I'm going to help you with that as we move into that. So, it's another thing I want you to look at. So we're talking about timeline work. And timeline means that you can either in your laboratory level do this, or again, you've got to be some practitioner. When you're working on forgiveness, some people have told me, no way do I want that person in my lab. That's my private inner sanctum, a wonderful workshop. I understand. And you do it outside you know, mentally in your imagination. Do it in the snow in your imagination, wherever is appropriate. I respect that. But keep that in mind. So what it means is you can use your clock mechanism. So you can always do this work with your eyelids closed in the meditation. Why is that important? Because when our eyes are open, we're more in a higher state of beta. When our eyelids are open, we're more in our logic, our reasoning, which is not a bad thing. But our logic and reasoning by design is critical. It's the inner gatekeeper. It's the critical, overly critical naysayer. It's the doubting Thomas within us that says, oh, really? Is that realistic? How come science has, you know what I mean? Or if people in our lives say that. So one way to bypass that is to close your eyes and have less physical input. And when you have less light coming in, less sound, that allows your brain waves to slow down into alpha and theta. If you look behind me, the green and the red and the chart, and fact. That lower brainwave function model, it's a model of childlike, childlike innocence that's open, wide open, learning, absorbing like a sponge. We all know that the children before they reach puberty, their brainwaves are generating the lower brain function more dominantly, more predominantly than the higher brainwave function. And you learn incredibly fast, almost like 25 times faster than adults do. So you're learning how to, this is the instruction manual. When you come into a silver class, we teach you the original alpha and theta training, how to access these altered states of consciousness, how, to, how you create a new state of being is by altering your state of consciousness, expanding your conscious awareness to access your subconscious, to access your ideal self, to access your authentic self. And that is what makes us who we are. And that's how you install a new program, a new idea, a new software, a new pattern. It's the fastest way. I'm not going to say it's easy, but with repetition over a period of time, it becomes automatic. And that's why I emphasize dynamic meditation is a key. It is a proven tool to affect these lasting changes. So you go back in time mentally to the actual event, to the occurrence, what happened. And you don't relive it, you acknowledge it. And you reframe it by canceling it out. That's not the way you want to be. Or you forgive the person, you recognize their humanity, and you reframe the situation the way you would have preferred it to have been, especially with yourself, acting more appropriately. And then you start imagining yourself back, back then in that time, and then carrying it forward to today and into the future, five, ten years, excuse me, five days from now, five months from now, five years from now. Another important takeaway from the world. So again, inner work is not a piece of cake, is it? You gotta do the inner work. And that's one of the things I love about you guys because you've graced me with your presence. And I said to you, I wanna work with people. I only coach people who wanna do the inner work. And my fees are not cheap. I acknowledge that, it's expensive. But I'm in your corner, you get my undivided attention. My mentoring, 
and I'm teaching advanced principles and we're working through advanced principles. So it's really kind of high level, it's not really coaching as much as it is mentoring and guiding and working. And it's not a long term process, usually about 90 days. So it's the trick. I mean, people come back pretty hard. So you do this in the next 90 days. You do the same thing at the repetition. So allow a deep breath. And let's just take a short pause for a second. And then we deep breath. If it's convenient for you to stand up and stretch, I'm not going to because, well, actually, I can. If you want. Oh, baby. So now you can just see my belly. The brain is very responsive to short pauses. About every 50 minutes, that's another learning strategy. If you can at work, if you can at school, if you can anytime you're busy studying, do whatever it is you're doing, about every 50 minutes to one hour, take a short pause, stretch, give you a glass of water. So a deep breath could be a, a quick um, transition meditation. Very effective. You will get more done in less time. You'll be more focused. Another take. Remember the transition meditation. So one more time. Yes, baby. Allow a deep breath. And let's go into the fourth takeaway. Mm. Triggers. Triggers, baby. Triggers. Uh, light switch. Switches, maybe. Part of what you and I do is we're shifting our awareness. We're shifting. You are meditating. You are altering the consciousness. Literally, your brain chemistry is changing. Literally, when we are in a meditative state, and as we go deeper, we're expanding our conscious awareness. We're accessing the subconscious as innermost thoughts, which is so subtle. But you know, really need to pay attention. And in it lies the opportunity to truly affect the changes. Yeah. However, we're also changing our brain chemistry. There's more norepinephrine, more dopamine, more serotonin. The stress hormones reduce. Blood pressure stabilizes. Cholesterol levels stabilize. Blood sugar levels stabilize. Our body goes into a state of bliss. I love the feeling. I admit I am addicted to meditation. I am addicted. I don't, I'm not a monk. I'm not any spiritual guy. You know, I party with the best of them. I'm a goofy guy. I, you know, okay? I like it because it helps me feel good. I, my body will often, and yours does too, tingle from head to toes. It's just, I could stay there forever. And one of the benefits of being self employed is if I want to stay for half an hour, an hour, I do. Because I find it so much more done. I have ideas and inspired. But the whole chemistry is literally changing. And we know that you go into a state of homeostasis. And that simply means balance. Your immune system is pumped, your immune system is boosted, and you're more likely to fight off any infection. So prevent colds, prevent viruses. It is more effective. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor, nor do I pretend to be a therapist. This is my personal opinion based on science and education. But it's probably more effective than the shots. You know, the, what do you call them? The flu, I don't even know what they call The flu shots, whatever. The key is keeping your body in balance. The research that's been around for a long time, by the way, but now it's being released again about the dangers of microwaves, the danger of our cell phones, you know, the danger of you know, the, 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 the microwave in the house. I remember hearing Dr. Bruce Lipton talk about this. He said, well, you know, it's our reality now. We're moving in that direction. It's like a freight train. We're not going to stop it. The best thing we could do is stay balanced. Because when you're in homeostasis and you're balanced, your body keeps you balance and it fights off infections, disease, prevents disease, and helps us to get into that flow. Get my gist, guys, with that. So that's why it triggers. So the point of this is when you're in that state, you want to install, you want to create your own triggers in the same way that as you're driving to work and all of a sudden you 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 um Drive into the parking garage, excuse me, and you see someone's parking space who happens to be your boss, your supervisor, oh my God, oh, that's that. And we go on. It triggers all the memory and then the feelings of the upset, how nasty they are, how overly demanding they are. Right? You've been there? You could be memories of a person. Sometimes it's rather pleasant. We think of someone who's no longer with us, someone that's very near to us. One of my mentors was Harry McKnight. Some of you had the pleasure to meet him. They also, and often I think of them before I ever give a presentation. I think of my grandson 
a big smile on my face because I have a very pleasant memory of song. That's where the trigger is. The things that have been ingrained where we have a neural pathway, an association used to be called neural associative condition. And when we think of it, and we look, it could be visual, if you just look at something, it reminds us. You look at a picture of someone you like, someone you love. Ah. Or you look at a picture of somebody you've had some upset with. Okay, you understand that. So the message is I want to ask you to move and make decisions and flow through life a feeling of love and appreciation rather than fear. Rather than me, 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 what's in it for me? Rather than lack and scarcity and, oh my God, what am I going to do? How will I pay the bill? And with that. In fact, for those of you in business, building a business or you're in sales or your clients or your coaches, a strategy that I use myself. In fact, it's masterful. We had a whole series of things happen in our family during the holiday, just before the holiday. And I'll just say that. I'm not going to go into detail. It was, not, it was very challenging. And it was upsetting. And I found myself getting a little bit into a funk. And not feeling like doing anything. Just kind of feeling tired and demotivated. So I looked in the mirror and here's a takeaway for you. And I talked to myself in the second and third person. Here's a little strategy. And by the way, psychologists will back this up. In neuro psychology, this is a proven effective strategy. So literally talk to yourself in the mirror. The opposite people are around. And coach yourself. So I said, well, Ken, come on. You've been there. You've done that. You've had these challenges before. You've worked it out. You'll do it again. And there are also some things from a business point of view that happen. But there's some broken agreements and people not sticking to their agreements. Yeah, that hurts. So you got to go beyond. And I wanted to liberate myself from that negative energy. It's not going to do anybody any good. It triggers more worry. And worry is like a rocking chair. It gives us something to do, but it gets us nowhere. And it's a real trap, the worry trap. Because if you go into worry, it'll start a whole cycle. Of stress hormones will increase, and you go into feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, feel overwhelmed. And then you give up or go worse, even into depression. And then, then get my idea. So, how do you do that? So, I want you to just reflect on this for a moment. Yes, there are people who disrespected us. Some of us are in work or at home. Or people are not appreciating who we are or our contribution and they take advantage of us. Or maybe there are broken agreements or policies you don't agree with. Right? So it's up to us to prime ourselves for the day. So while you are in your ideal state, your quiet, relaxed state, your happy state, your laboratory level, your silver alpha state, doesn't matter. You're quiet and relaxed, ideal all is closed. Just three slow deep breaths. Feel some appreciation for your few minutes. And then you can simply install. Now, as I move through my day, when I'm working with my clients, or maybe you want to be specific, when I'm working with a very challenging client, a friend, a person, or when I'm in that situation that I'm finding to be difficult, I'm going to feel relaxed and confident and poised, just like I am now. I use my three finger technique. You want to, that's how you install the trigger. Or you can say, when I see this person's face, or when I hear this person's voice, that will remind me of the beauty, like just the great feeling I'm having now. So you've got to get yourself into a state of calm, a state of appreciation, a state of grace, a state of bliss, a state of calm and flow, appreciating life and the joys and everything you've accomplished. That creates a feeling of love, and of love and appreciation. And then you install it by just thinking, by being clear about your intention. That when I hear Mary's voice, when I'm working with my client, when I'm driving to work in that heavy traffic, you get the idea? That will remind me I'm in control. I can do this and help me to access this feeling. Or you can do something like using your fingers. And I put these fingers together, these three fingers. So you do it while you're there in that state. And it reminds you so that as you move through the day, it's another huge, huge, huge takeaway, guys. I don't mean to use that expression because there's somebody in America that we're all here using the word huge, huge. But, but it's big, it's enormous. So that will make a big, big difference. 
no victims here. You and I have no excuse to be victims because we have the tools. Now we just have to use them and employ those tools. And let's lead with love. Let's lead with appreciation. Let's lead with generosity. Another thing to do is give, and you're in the cycle of giving, and you're in the cycle of teaching someone, and you're in the cycle of ha helping someone, and you're in the cycle of supporting someone, and you're in the cycle of volunteering, so giving, making a donation to a worthy cause. That changes our energy. That puts us into a state of abundance. That communicates to the universe that I'm good enough. I'm okay. I have more than enough. When we hold back, the scarcity and afraid that we won't have enough, that, be, that changes our energy too, guys. And it gets us into a state that pushes away. So just let that settle. Let that sink in. So what we're talking about is I want you to prime, that's what they call it now. We call it programming in silver, but now we call it priming the day. So in the morning, before you begin your day, you're doing this. After the life, or for a year. More important than setting a year's resolution is do this on a daily basis because every day when you have a success, yes, yes, it reinforces you're making progress. So every day you, you look back and say, yes. The little baby steps lead to the bigger step. So if you're building a new business, if you're advancing yourself, or whatever it is that you're learning, developing, you want to take it a step at a time so that you're responding rather than so let me give you an example let's let's do a quick little um mental exercise i'm just like i said i want to look at this and i want to do this let's um let's let's do it. we have time let's have time we have like less than 25 minutes but we have time to do this but i want to go into then a fifth takeaway for you but trust your intuition and restarting for that and for example just close your eyes Wow, deep breath. Nice and easy. Okay, another deep breath. Hold it briefly. Exhale out your mouth. Divide or attune to a deep level of greater awareness. One more deep breath. Exhale. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. Now, feel some appreciation for when you've had someone or something in your life that you feel good about that contributes to you feeling yes. And now, think of a challenging situation, maybe later today, maybe people you're going to be with in your gathering of family and friends, maybe work, maybe work with a client, doesn't matter what it is, any challenging situation. As you acknowledge that situation, what you say to yourself now is, and every time I'm in this situation, when I see this person, when I'm in this situation, I'll be reminded of I'm in command, I'm in control, and I'll regain access to this feeling of calm that I feel now. Or you can put your two fingers together, first two fingers and thumb, just touch them together, and tell yourself, Whenever I do such and so, this has caused my mind, my body to adjust to this deep level of awareness and help me to maintain a relaxed, focused state of attention, just like I am now. Anything you want to put in there. Now open your eyelids. Get the idea? I want this to be crystal clear. These are the kinds of things I want you to start doing each and every day. It's going to make a big, huge difference for you guys. You got to do it. Yes, I know you will. I know, I know, I know, I know you are. Okay. So let's go on to number five. I'll come back to this a little bit. We talked about another fifth point I wanted to zero in. We did a total of 10 master classes. This is number 10 this year. So I've been picking out of this some of the highlights, key things. Go back and review some of them. Go on my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the YouTube channel and find them. Some of them you only have access if they were you know, a workshop where you paid a small fee, look out for them. I'll be doing more. It varies with that. So you bypass the gatekeeper. You get guidance and you're in alignment in that flow by putting your subconscious to work while you're sleeping. So 
So three key points. Number one, stay calm and relaxed. So you can do this at night before you go to sleep. So give yourself a suggestion that tonight while I'm sleeping, if you're a silver practitioner, use this dream control. Otherwise, give yourself a suggestion. This is a challenge in my mind. This is a situation. Thank you, source. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe, for guiding me in my dreams tonight to help me understand how I can best handle this, how I can solve this challenge, how I can bring my A game to the situation. A pencil, pencil handy so that you write down. That's one way you can put your subconscious to work for you while you're sleeping. And what your intention is, and you make that suggestion before you go off to sleep, express it in advance. Thank you, source. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, mom, for guiding me, for helping me to have a dream tonight that will understand, that will help me to know how I can best handle the situation. Be playful. Make it a game. Think of it as a game. Not a big challenge. Not work. A game. So we know that when you're relaxed, when you're playful, you're more likely to activate your higher thinking function. You're more likely to access your intuition. And then when you're purposeful, have a purpose. I want to go into another brief exercise, it's a brilliant exercise I use with my coach clients, called the Jumpstart Question. So why is this important to you? Be purposeful in it. What are the value? What's the benefits? How will it serve you or those you care about? How will it make things better for you? And you may remember in some of the videos I've done and some of the work, we talked about the I wonder game, which relates to bringing best self. So to play the wonder game, you can just daydream. In your, or close your eyes and be in your happy place. And do this with me right now. I was closed, allow a slow deep breath. Think of your happy place. Think of the beach, the nearby riverbank. And the wonder game is, I wonder what my life would be like if I bring my best self into my golf game. I wonder what my life, how I play. I wonder what my career would be like if I bring my best self. And you think the purpose, the meaning, what that would mean to you. Describe it. What would it look like, your best self? I wonder what my life would be like when I'm more loving and kind and generous and accepting of my spouse, my partner, my friend. I wonder what my life would be like when I pay more attention to the people I care about. So the I wonder game is you think of important situations, challenges to you, you can open your eyes if you want, and you imagine it, you fantasize it, and it's a way to access your intuition. It's a way to access ideas, a stream of consciousness, that will give you ideas and solutions and steps and things to know what to do. Doing this, guys, regularly, it works with that. And while you're doing it, you want to elevate some very deep, positive emotion. So let's do an exercise. I'm talking about creating a vision of your future. To be defined by a vision of your future rather than instead of the past. So we want to be what? Learn from the past. We want to be, that's our define, but refine at the past. So that we can then move on with the conscious attempt and create that new state of being. So these questions, let me just read them to you. Keep your eyes open, then we'll do it with our eyelids closed. And this is the kind of thing I want you to do regularly. In fact, if you're watching this, the replay, before the new year, do this anytime. And certainly as part of your new year um, strategy, new year routine, as you get ready for it. Number one is what is it you want to create? So you think of your goals, your aspirations, what more do you want? So you're reflecting on the past, you're reflecting on what, what were the wins, and you're reflecting on what maybe didn't work, what held you back, and how that relates to where you want to be now. What's important to you? So you can do each and every situation, whether it be a new business, a new situation, a new relationship. And what's motivating you to create this? This is your big why. What's motivating? What are the benefits, the value? Third, what talents and strengths do you have? So one is, what do you want to create? Two, what's motivating you to create this or what the benefits? Three, what talents and strengths do you ask yourself, do I have, do you have, that align with my intention? 
that you're in a dialogue. You're thinking of where you've been, what you've accomplished. Why is this valuable to me? How that you want to extend the value. And not just you, me, 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 but people, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your clients, excuse <clears throat> me, your customers. Let me just get a glass of water. Excuse me. And how will I and others benefit from this? So you need to elevate your emotions in order to make this work. In order to start installing the new neural pathway, you want to do it with an elevated emotion of joy, of happiness, of eagerness. Yes, baby! And when we do that, that's what breaks down the resistance. And then you need the repetition to make it permanent. So remember to do this. I want you to do this at least a few times a week over the next 90 days. Guys. And that will guarantee you to be more likely, probably sooner than 90 days, but 90 days just in case to make sure you get back into that. So let's do this, another exercise. So I want you to do in this method a series of short little guided processes to demonstrate what you do on your own. And when you're on your own, you can spend a little bit more time. But also while you want to review this repeatedly. So again, allow your eyes to close. Do a deep breath. Hold it briefly, and as you exhale, just release any tension. Desire to relax. Think of the number three, 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 three. Uh, another deep breath. And again, exhale, release any tension. Feel the grad, two, 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 two. Physically relax, mentally relax. Uh, third deep breath. Just hold it. Okay, how good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. It's a wonderful, healthy state of being. Now, always first think of some joy, someone that brings joy in your life, someone you're happy in your life, or something you're happy is a part of your life. An opportunity available to you. Just appreciate it. Typically, spend at least 30 seconds to a minute. And now, what is it that you want to create? What are some of the aspirations? As you reflect on what didn't work, what were some of the challenges you had this past year, this past month, could be the past day? What do you want to correct? What do you want to improve? What do you want to bring out? What it would be, what would your best self look like? What is it that you want? How it, what will it look like? What will it feel like? So just do one at a time. And reflect on it. Imagine and visualize it. And why is this important to you? What's motivating you to create this? Maybe you want to make a difference. You want to contribute somehow to the success of this movement, this organization. Perhaps you want to have more love and, and experience more joy in the relationship. Perhaps you want to heal, be healthy. You want to enjoy this person, whatever it is. Okay. What would it feel like? What would it look like? How would you know? What's your intention? Third, what talents and strengths do you have? We all have our own talents and strengths. What you bring with you, that you can do good, make a difference, and have fun while you're doing it. That's my motto. Do good, make a difference, have fun. And fourth, why is this valuable to you? How would this benefit you and those you care about? So another answer to this, the fifth question, how will you and others benefit from this creation? So first step, how will this benefit you? Why is it valuable to you? Imagine that, visualize that. How will this benefit others, those you care about? So 
imagined? And how will you know you've accomplished it? What will you see? What will you experience? How will you feel? Take a few moments to energize that. Imagine, build up your energy. Experience the joy. Thank God. Thank the universe. Thank your mother. Thank whoever, whatever. Be appreciative. This is so. Now you're going to open your eyelids and be awake and be alert. Back. Great feeling. Back to this time and place. Oof. <laughs> I do that with you. Maybe snap your fingers. Sometimes rub your hands. Put them over your eyes. Oops. <laughs> You can wiggle your ears. That helps bring you back. You can thump your thymus. That helps to bring you back. Excellent, excellent. Good job. You guys rock. Wow. I wish I could see your faces. That's why I look forward to seeing you in the live class. Because we have covered, again, whether you are new at this, and this is like, oh my God, what they're talking about. Or whether you know this already and you're practicing it. Regardless, are you doing it? Make sure you follow these steps. These are proven steps and strategies. Just and add them to whatever you know already. Work with them. And enjoy the benefits, the results for them. So we talk about making this new state of being. And there's an exercise I like doing called future self. It's playful. And what would it be like? So I'm, I'm just going to hurt some people talking about this. And I'm going to ask you to imagine you now moving ahead in time to your future. And I'm going to read some things to you that I, that I copied, that I printed out for this exercise with that. And then also, as I do this, I'm going to briefly review some of the key points of what we covered for you to help you access them with more clarity. That's why repetition is so important, and not just now today, but Maybe tomorrow I'll review a little bit because what you'll find if you go over your notes, even let alone the video, it helps to make it permanent. We dream out most of what we learn. It's amazing. It's upsetting. It's really something to think of. It's getting warm in here. I have the heat on too high. I heard about that. So much of it we dream out. So make sure you take the time to review. And that's the surest way to make this permanent. So in this exercise, what I'm going to ask you to do is, I'll just describe it briefly. It's part of the proprietary process I learned, but as you, you know, describe it, I'm setting up this, they like my new um, gadget, Santa Claus brought me this. So I thought I'd try this out as a mic, hoping that it would improve the sound quality, helping me to be more direct with you. So, that. so I'm going to ask you to, on your timeline, to extend ahead into the future. And first, before we do, I'll ask you, what do you want to let go of? What are some of the challenges? So what is it that, so to speak, your vision of the future? What is it that, that, that you want? And then what is it that you're struggling with that you need to let go of? And then we'll go back to a vision of the future. With it. So it could be what you want for this week, this month, for this year, for your lifetime. And then we'll extend it out for that. And as best you can. So I'll take it from there. So along the lines of things that you know, things that I've already described you know, with you. So you ready? Okay, so please make yourself comfortable. Allow your eyes to close. Nice and easy. And I'm going to keep my eyes open because I'm going to be reading to you directly from. So I want you to take three very slow, deep breaths again. And as you exhale, mentally repeat, visualize, think of the number three, three times. And just release that which no longer serves your highest good. Helping you to let it go. Now another deep breath, slowly inhaling, filling your body. Exhale, let your mouth. 
of good appeals to progressively relax the gender deep. Now allow another deep breath. And we'll let go and The vibe of attune to a higher state of being to alter a state of awareness into the mid-range of alpha, a state of balance and homeostasis. That will help to accelerate the healing in your body, help you to ground yourself into a state of bliss and harmony. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. So I don't mean to date this, but whether you're listening to this now or a year from now or repeatedly, this is relevant anytime. So every day we have the opportunity to grow. Every day we have a new beginning. So as we start the new year with a new day, and we face new challenges and experience new dimensions of love and joy, remember that our life is a game, is an initiation. We're here to evolve. We're here to be, to make manifest our idea, our best self, that authentic self. We're here in this dimension because it's, some have said, a staging ground a place to demonstrate what we believe to be true. I remember studying with Ram Dass, Baba Ram Dass, and him often talking about, you know, that we're here to make manifest in the world our ideal self, and that life is a dance. So what is the dance you're doing? And what is it that you want to evolve into a greater degree of wholeness? All of us have negotiated the very conditions in our personal lives, as well as our bodies, and even our genetics, some have said, to create our best chances of spiritual evolution. We hear a soul on a plane of demonstration to demonstrate greatness, to demonstrate godlike qualities, and to evolve, to be our best self, to bring out our ideal, authentic, genuine self, and be integrity. And once we embrace this concept as the truth, then it becomes less about getting things in our life, more about who we've become, and the joy, and the sense of fulfillment that comes with that, the sense of honor and love, and the good feeling that comes with it. And that's what mastery is all about. We evolve to a mastery, a level of mastery. So as we do this now, what I want to do is what is this new state of being, this new beginning you want to make manifest in the world? What is that new self that you want to bring with you today, tomorrow, this month, this year? What is this new beginning? And imagine how it feels. How will you know you're there? What will you feel? What will you think? And as you reflect on this new state of being, what are some of the struggles, challenges that you need to let go of, that you need to learn from and let go of and release and free yourself from so that you can liberate your energy to make manifest in the world these new beginnings? Acknowledge those challenges. As in letting them go, releasing them, receive it. If forgiveness is necessary, later you may want to spend more time forgiving this person in the situation. You can always come back and spend more time as you need. Right now, you're acknowledging, minimally letting go, maybe forgiving yourself, giving yourself permission not to be perfect. Fantastic. You rock. Now, what is this new beginning? What is this vision of the future? What is your future self? How will you be? What will you look like? What are the benefits? 
how does it benefit you and where does it care about you? How does it make you feel? Let me pause. Let me just reflect on that. I feel this way. Ele you elevate your emotions by thinking of the benefits, the value, as if you're there already living it. Imagine the congratulations you receive, the handshake, the hugs, the smiling faces, the breakthroughs your clients, your friends, your family have, the goodwill. Every time you function at this dimension of now, with this sincere desire to help yourself, to help others, your talents will increase and you will get better and better every time. You may now open your eyelids and when you do, be awake, be alert, feeling fantastic, feeling much, much better than before, feeling rejuvenated and revitalized. Oh, baby. Stretch a little bit. Good morning. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, guys. Let me just make sure everything's okay here. Volume. I know I've just went a couple of minutes past. Again, I remind you, I, it's great. I love doing this for you. And I hope you, you appreciate, and more importantly, that you get good value. And I know you will when you follow through and you actually use this and work with it and repeat those applications. And that's up to you. I can't make you do it. I can't force you. All I can do is hopefully inspire you and motivate you. If you'd like more of this, if you are not already on my email list, if you want the silver method of Connecticut.com, silver method, ct.com, you can just see on the right wherever the newsletter button is and just opt in and I'll keep you posted the schedule. Free video training, blog posts that I do regularly, there's a whole blog section of page, video blogs, anything to help you grow, special offers, deals, etc. Be great to have you on there. Or maybe you want to just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Either way, take that. So guys, you rock, fantastic. I thoroughly enjoy being here with you. And I look forward to seeing more. And I look forward to the rest of your life, to the very best of your life. That's something Jose Silva used to say. I mean that. I know that you are far better than what you appear to be. Remember that. Thank you. Have a great one, and I'm going to sign off now.